Hey folks, today we have another laptop video, but this one's a special one. Some of you may have heard of a company called System76. They sell Linux tailored computers, similar to companies like Zarezen and Pogo Linux, amongst others. Only they tailor Ubuntu on the desktop, for the most part. They do sell servers as well, but Ubuntu on the desktop seems to be the thing that they tout the most. System76 I've seen thrown around in a bunch of different Linux podcasts and shows and whatnot I've seen over the years, mostly Jupiter Broadcasting related and most recently Brian Lunduke related. So what we're going to do is take a look at a couple of the laptops, and this is the first one. This is the Gazelle, the 2017 model. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with System76, as far as their laptop line goes, they are basically a Clevo reseller. Uh, they will rebrand the machines and even customize them slightly uh, to fit their needs and then sell them as Linux tailored laptops. Now Clevo does this with several several different companies. I've heard of Sager. Um, I think there's another one but there's also a place where you can get the machines directly called AVA Direct. So you can just get the plain Clevo machines through there. I decided to go the System76 route because I've noticed there aren't a whole lot of high quality videos of these laptops on YouTube and I think as a Linux enthusiast and as a tech enthusiast it it, it just has to be done. We gotta take a look at these in better detail. So this is what I got in the mail today. I ordered this maybe a week ago something like that and uh, I got the extra AC adapter and the extra battery with it as well as the extended warranty and the computer itself. Now this isn't your typical System76 box. This looks more like the Clevo box to me actually, where it just says notebook computer. I've seen this in a couple of videos of System76 machines online. Um, so sometimes you get a generic box, sometimes you get a really nice System76 box. The next laptop I take a look at hopefully will have the nicer box so that I can at least uh, show you it. So pretty generic box. There is nothing on it. Pretty much nothing to see here. So let's take a look at what's inside. Yeah, I'm going to need two hands for this, aren't I? Definitely going to need two hands. Okay, computer. Um, plastic thing. Cord. Power adapter. Anything else? No, that's it. So here's what comes in the box. Get your power cord, you get your adapter here. Since it's a uh, Clevo laptop, basically, they use Chigany adapters, which are... What kind of adapter is this? It's a 19 volt, 4.74 amp, 90 watt adapter. So, if you wanted to get a generic adapter for this, if you lost it, it would probably not be that hard, as long as you knew what the specs of it were. And I get this, which I think is hardware. Looks like I get screws for the hard drive. Um, S a fake SD card for whatever reason. I think they're supposed to give me hardware for the uh, extra hard drive bay. We'll see. But here's the laptop itself. Let's take a look at it here. Get it out of its plastic. This is the machine itself. It's a 15 inch machine. Has a System76 sticker on the bottom there. It's got the battery pre installed. Let's open this up and get this plastic off. Not the easiest to get open, I suppose. But. Ah, look at that. <laughs> this is it. This is a System76 machine in the flesh. This is the Gazelle. So it's a pretty good feeling keyboard from what I've felt so far. This is higher quality than I was expecting, wow. The keyboard feels pretty solid, there's not much flex at all. The screen hinge is nice and tight, which is good. That'll loosen up as I use it over the years. Fit and finish is nice. This logo is indeed stickers on the back here, so I'm going to add stickers to this machine as we go along. Uh, how easy is it to get the battery out? I think you need two hands to get the battery out. And then you pull up like that, and then it comes out. 
and there's a SIM slot in there that doesn't look like it's occupied by anything. I'll show you that. There is, that's where a SIM slot would be on a machine where it would have the modem in it. I don't think the System76 machines have a 3G modem or a 4G modem in them. Okay, so that's the first look at a little Clevo machine. Let's take a look at the I.O. It's very old school and I really like that about this laptop. You get your power input, uh, DC connector, you get Ethernet, VGA without the screws, but what do you expect on a newer machine? Uh, HDMI, USB 3.1, USB-C, USB 3.1, USB-A, an SD card slot, some indicator LEDs on the front here, which is nice to see on some newer machines. Separate headphone and microphone jacks, which I really like. Headset jacks aren't my favorite thing in the world. USB 2, USB 3.1, a vent, Kensington lock slot. On the back is ventilation, really, and that's about it. There's not much to it. The laptop actually feels really well built. The, the frame of the screen is metal. It feels like aluminum to me. Really nicely constructed. Uh, like a gaming, like like the, the similar construction you'd find on a gaming laptop. This is also metal, which is really nice. Yeah, this is this is all metal. That's really nice, very very nice. So the hardware of the machine seems to be pretty well built so far. The first thing we're going to do is open this thing up and upgrade it, because I have some RAM and a hard drive to put in here. Hopefully, they, that's why I'm hoping they gave me all the hardware for it. So, let's open this thing up and see what it's like. Okay, so servicing one of these does take a little bit of time. I had to take out this many screws. Lots of screws. Tons of them, including the three under the battery. Remember to do that, because those tabs look like they're pretty easy to break off took the battery out, all that stuff, and it's held together by some clips in some parts, and then you take the bottom off, and you have access to all this. So, a lot like um, some of the ThinkPads and Dells I've worked on, you take the bottom pan off, you get access to everything. So it has that advantage um, to make it similar to a business class machine. Now here's the parts they put in there. There's the wireless card. I believe this is an Intel 8268-433 wireless AC card. Here's the RAM they decided to put in there. It looks it's a brand I've never seen before. Gold Key RAM. It's 8 gigs of, D of uh, DDR4 PC2400 CL17. So the timings on that are not very good. It's cheap RAM. Very cheap RAM. Uh, what we're going to do is use the RAM that came in my ThinkPad to upgrade it. Remember the ThinkPad X260 I made a video of? This is the stick that came out of that, a Micron 8 gig stick, which is actually a slower stick. It's a uh, it's DDR3 2133, but in this case it's really not going to matter that much. Just having 16 gigs is good enough for me, honestly. Okay, so RAM is upgraded now. Easy. Now we're going to stick a hard drive in here and they've left the caddy in which is really nice and then put the screws in this bag over here well I've come to find something unfortunate this is a very thick hard drive this one terabyte one it does not fit into the system 76 machine it is too tall or too fat I should say to fit in there but the other 500 gig drive that I have that's a thinner drive does fit this one also came out of the ThinkPad X260 when I got it if I shove this down here it does fit it does fit in the slots so I'm gonna have to find a thin drive that fits in here that's big enough for my needs the 500 gig is actually might do just fine um, I have a 750 as well but I'm kinda using that at the moment to store data on so I might just end up using this drive um, I don't know I'll decide and we'll see all right, I just decided to use the uh, 500 gig drive that came out of the ThinkPad X260, and I'll just put that in here instead. 500 gigs should be plenty, honestly. I was hoping for one terabyte because it's a it's a standard size I use in a lot of computers, but you know, whatever. So this 500 gig that I just had lying around should be fine. So that's a 120 gig SSD for the OS, 
and uh, 500 gigs for the home partition. So that'll that will this will still be a nice machine even with that. And I can change the drive later anyway. That's one huge perk about System 76 is that by opening this and upgrading it, you don't void your warranty. Unlike a lot of other companies, such as the ones that such as an MSI laptop that you'll be seeing soon, I cannot open. This despite it being under warranty because I don't want people messing around in there but somebody like System76 expects you to do something like this which is why I'm opening it the day I get it to put a drive in it and put and put that extra stick of RAM in so that's one huge perk about System76 so I'm gonna button this thing back up and we're gonna turn it on and see what it's like on first boot up one thing I do notice about this board that I should point out before buttoning, back, buttoning it back up is these pads here it looks almost like a GPU would go there, and maybe a GPU card or cooling for that GPU would go here. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Maybe this board's used in multiple Clevo machines. I just thought I'd point that out. It's a bit interesting. Because you can see the heat sink things here that a heat, like a heat pipe like this would go over. So, that's kind of neat. Alright, the machine's buttoned backed up, and I've applied my first sticker to the back of this machine. This computer is going to be a repository of many fun stickers. I remember doing, I used to do that to a MacBook Pro back in the day. And, uh, yeah, a bunch of random stickers are going to be put on here, and I'll have to show you, I'll have to update you guys on those stickers at some point, because they're going to be really funny once I get them. This sticker I've had for a while, and I finally get to apply it to something. Ting is the phone service I use, by the way. So, this machine. So far, what do I think of it, having ser having serviced it for the first time and uh, taking a look at it? It is, feels really solid. I'm I'm very surprised. I've I've heard people give Clevo some crap in the past for building some subpar machines, but this one feels really really tough, well put together, like a modern gaming laptop almost. The keyboard especially, I'm very surprised how good this keyboard feels. So let's take a look. A closer look at the machine now that I'm done servicing it. Uh, you've seen the I.O. Now, on the inside you get an HDMI sticker and you get your Core i5 sticker right here. This this one I've equipped with the quad-core version of the i5 rather than the i7, which is a rare find on um, Cabby Lake laptops, it seems. Um, it's a bit hard to find that. So I, I, put this, I put the Core i5, I think it's 7300 HQ in this machine. I think that's the chip, I can't quite remember. So here's the keyboard. It's a nice chiclet. Well, it's yeah, it's a nice chiclet style keyboard that feels really good to type on. Actually, it's pretty. It's fairly tactile. Uh, instead of a Windows key, they have an Ubuntu key, which you know it's the same key on any laptop, but they just put the Ubuntu logo on it instead of the Windows logo because it's a Linux laptop company. So there you have it. This has a 1080p screen, which is nice for a 15.6 inch laptop. Um, 15.6 inch might be a little big to some of you guys, but honestly, it's not that bad. The laptop isn't terribly heavy, and it's fairly thin for a lap laptop of its type. So, let me get some more light in the situation here, and we'll take a look at the machine. So, I hope, hopefully, this thing has a charge. Let's see if the battery has a charge. Let's uh, turn the machine on. And try to get into the BIOS. The keyboard is backlit, which is nice. Let's see if I can get into the BIOS here. might take a while because I put different RAM in it. Come on, Clevo. You can do it. There it goes. I forget, I don't know what the BIOS key is for these Clevo machines. So it might just boot up into Ubuntu without even asking. Yeah, it is. It's booting up into Ubuntu. So, I had this pre-installed with Ubuntu 16.04 because that was just the default option. And they did the OEM configuration. So, how's the trackpad feel? I don't have a mouse yet for some reason. <laughs> nice job, Ubuntu. <laughs> Come on. I don't think Ubuntu likes me very much. 
Let's try that again. <laughs> Maybe the out-of-the-box experience isn't the best one to film on this machine, because it's just not liking me very much. Let's try to get into the BIOS again. Alright. That got me to the uh, boot menu, at least. It might be installed with EFI, I'm not sure. Let's try doing this again, and hopefully the mouse and keyboard work this time. Yes, I have a mouse this time. That's a glitch that happens with Linux sometimes. There you go, we have a mouse this time, and it's... The trackpad's very sensitive. I like that. I like that a lot. So I can connect to a Wi-Fi network if I want to, but I'm not going to right now. I'm just going to do the setup. I'm not going to bother with Wi-Fi right now because this is going to get reinstalled anyway. But as you can see, on a Linux machine like this from a vendor, it, it it's just like any other computer. You go through a setup process. We're just going to name it user right now and just not even care. Password is 1. Nice. It's the worst password ever. Don't ever use that in practice. But there you go. That's the out-of-the-box experience on an Ubuntu-powered laptop. You essentially get a setup screen. You set up your username and all that stuff. It's not unlike buying a Mac or buying a Windows machine. And then it'll configure all your hardware. And then it will uh, eventually get you'll give um yeah, that, that eventually it'll push you to the desktop. It's trying to do stuff. And there you go. There's your login screen, which does look very nice. So, password is 1. <laughs> That's a terrible password. And there you go, there's your desktop. Now, what I wanted to show you on this is the, uh, the stuff that System76 pre-installs. The reason you want to buy a Linux laptop from System76, or the motivation, is not only can you work on it when you first buy it right out of the box and not void your warranty, but they also provide drivers for the hardware. Uh, let's go to your system settings here. There's a System76 driver in the system settings here, which takes care of a few things for you. It even tells you what model you have. This is Gaze 12 for Gazelle. Um, so, what it'll do is it'll fix the internal mic gain. You can restore the system to factory defaults, and you can create log files. So it looks like the only fix applied to this machine was to fix the mic gain. Um, I wonder if the display scaling is on this machine. That might only be on the high DPI setups. Oh, there are there is scaling, which is really needed for some of the high DPI machines. Uh, so essentially what System76 will do with their hardware is they will tailor the software to work with their hardware for a nice unified experience. It's a very Apple-like way to go about that, and I actually really like that. So let's just demonstrate upping the scaling. Let's try 1.62. You can make it huge, man. It's, yeah. Not everything scales, but the scaling does work. You get a 1080p screen out of this, which is pretty nice. So that's what an out-of-the-box experience is like. It's just an Ubuntu install with extra driver support and System 76's own custom theme, I think. I believe that this theme for Ubuntu is their own custom one. They have their own custom wallpaper, uh, and I, th I don't think the icons are custom, I'm not sure, but it, it's, it's looking like that it, they just stick their own theme on it, stick a, uh, a, a utility that keeps drivers up to date, keeps the hardware working well with the software and all that, and it's Ubuntu-centric. So you can install any distro you want on a machine like this, but Ubuntu is the one that they mostly support, so if you want an experience that just works. It's best to stick with the Ubuntu flavors, such as, you know, regular Ubuntu, Ubuntu Mate, Kubuntu, Xubuntu, etc., etc., even Linux Mint. Uh, so, for the most unified experience, that's what you want, but that's not what I plan to do with this machine. <laughs> I know my way around Linux. I've been using it since 2005, so uh, 
I'm going to give OpenSUSE Tumbleweed a try on this machine and uh, give that a shot. So I'm going to make a USB stick of that and we're going to install it. First though, I'd like to show at least the hardware uh, prompt in here is... I don't think that's in the settings here. I mean, Unity Unity confuses me a little bit sometimes just because I'm not used to it. So, system monitor. Okay. Let's go to the system monitor and take a look at the specs of the machine. So, it does see all 16 gigs of RAM. You get your quad core processor. I wish it would actually tell you what the processor is, like it does in other desktop environments, but unfortunately, they crippled it in this. There might be another place I can find that like system information or something. I don't know if that's in here somewhere. Yeah, I, I don't know where it is, but basically, it's a it's a core, it's an, a true quad core i5 rather than just dual core hyper threaded. I think it's the 7300 HQ. So there you have it. Now what I'm going to do is put put OpenSUSE on here and give that a shot and see if I can get along with it on this machine. If not, I'll probably end up either putting Ubuntu Mate or Debian back on it, but I'm going to give OpenSUSE a shot. So, yeah, here we go. Okay, I did manage to get into the BIOS for this machine. I had to look it up on System76's website real quick. For the more recent laptops, it's F2, and the boot menu is F7. For some of their older models, it's F1. So, it, like, no laptop seems to have a standard BIOS button. I wish it was all just delete and F12, to be honest. But here we go. SATA port 0 has the Western Digital 120 gig SSD. 2 has the 500 gig Seagate drive that we just installed. NVMe controller, eh? Huh. I, I think that slot can take an NVMe SSD. I'm not sure. It should, though. I like how it shows the conventional me the uh, I like how it shows uh, conventional memory 640k. <laughs> uh, it shows extended memory it has 16 gigs. It's probably now running at 2133 because of that one micron stick that I stuck in there. In addition to the other one, uh, it does have the Intel Core i5 7300HQ running at 2.5 gigahertz. It's a true quad core chip. I opted for that because I could. The i7s are in everything. The i5s aren't in that many machines, so went mid-range. SATA mode is AHCI, of course. What can you change in here? Let's turn virtual machine. Let's turn the virtual machine stuff on, of course. Fast boot is enabled. Um, flexi charger. GPU performance scaling. Yeah, I'll, I'll just leave all that alone for now. What's under security? So you, you can uh, you can turn secure boot on and and uh, talk about or talk about or um, just enable TPM stuff. Uh, but that's all by default because this is a Linux machine. UEFI boot enabled, so you can disable that as well. Um, so there is that. Now what I'd ideally like to do is set this to legacy, just so that um, booting really isn't that much of an issue, but I think that OpenSUSE can probably handle it, but let's turn UEFI booting off and see what we can do in the boot options. Probably have to, uh, whoops, that's not what I want, probably have to save the changes and go back into the BIOS afterwards to... Uh, make this work the way I want. F2, whoops. F2, F2. See, now it's acting more like a traditional laptop. Now if I go back to the boot options after rebooting, there we go, now it's traditional, just the way I like it. Traditional BIOS mode, that's what I like. So you can go in here and disable that if you like. Uh, which is nice because that's the way I prefer to do things. Um, so let's start installing Tumbleweed. I think before I do that, I need to plug in Ethernet. So let's plug in Ethernet. It's on the left side of the laptop, I think. Yes, it is. So there you go, Ethernet. 
The nice thing about this laptop is they keep a lot of those ports around like Ethernet that people do use on a professional level. F7. And then we'll start up from the Centon DS Pro. And we'll get started installing Tumbleweed. Boot from the installation. And there we go. We are off to the races. So pretty soon I will have OpenSUSE Tumbleweed on here with the Mate desktop, just the way I like it. It'll be a very nice machine. I'll show you the process once it's done. Uh, what I'm going to do as far as partitioning goes is I'm going to make the 120 gig drive SSD rather. I'm going to use that for root and swap. Uh, I know you, I know a lot of people say you shouldn't use swap on an SSD, but I do anyway. I, what I do in the OS is I just turn the swappiness down to 10, and it just barely uses it. It's it's really only there if I need it. Um, and I'm going to use the 500 gig hard drive that we just installed earlier as the home partition, so that will ha have all the space for videos and games and yada 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 on there. So that'll be really nice. This is this is going to be one workhorse of a laptop. I'm looking forward to this. The laptop this is replacing is my T430, and rightly so. This has a quad-core CPU in it, so it'll definitely perform well when I use Handbrake with it. So <laughs> it'll be very nice. I'm liking the backlight on this keyboard. It's quite nice. It's slowly booting. Okay, after quite a few days of experimenting with this machine, a lot of experimenting, this computer is finally set up. I settled on the Debian uh, flavor of Linux, Debian 9, which will be final in just a couple days here. And uh, that seems to run the best on here. I've tried OpenSUSE, I've tried Arch, uh, what else did I try? Well, Ubuntu was on here to begin with, but I didn't want to use that. so. OpenSUSE was what I originally settled on, but unfortunately, because it's a rolling release distro, I had problems with it. Uh, the, the Mate desktop broke. For example, when you open a window, you'll see that it has a title bar and you know buttons to minimize, maximize, and close the window. That whole, t that whole bar just went away. And not only, not only did that happen and I have to use the menus to quit applications, uh, things just didn't respond properly. Uh, for example, I'd tell the computer to go to the shutdown menu, which you'd normally do like this, and that shutdown menu, as you see here, just would not appear. So OpenSUSE was entirely unstable on a machine like this, and it, sh it, it really shouldn't be, because OpenSUSE, because this is an entirely Intel platform, just bo top to bottom, an Intel platform. Uh, so it should be stable as a rock, but unfortunately, Mate on OpenSUSE right now is just not stable at all. On Debian, however, it is very stable. Even even in the even when it's in release candidate stage, it's stable. So you know, there we go. Um, so yeah, I ended up settling on Debian for that reason. So here's a view of it. There's Debian 9 stretch. It's using Linux kernel 4.9.0-3. Um, 16, it's, it's the blah, blah, blah. <laughs> the 16 gigs of RAM does show up, although as you saw in the beginning of the video or towards the beginning of the video, the RAM the RAM is probably clocked down to 2133 thanks to that one stick. But that doesn't seem to make much of a difference in my use of the machine. It has a, there's the true quad core Core i5 7300HQ. I'm really glad I opted for that option because 7700 HQs are in everything and the 7300 HQ you don't see too much um, in too many machines so I think that's a good option to have uh, plus it it suits my needs just fine I mean look look how much res look how many resources I'm using not a whole lot but this is also at idle so yeah there's the swap there I'm not using any swap most that's nor typical for me is I just don't use that much swap because I set the swappiness on the com on the computers I use to 10 anyway which I still need to do to this machine so yeah there's that um, this machine has been very very solid so far though I've, my use of it has been pretty good I used OBS to record videos of the webcam and microphone that you'll see later and uh, worked fine the computer has been an absolute rock star uh, the gazelle is pretty good. Uh, 
should show you the backlighting of the keyboard. It has five different levels. One, two, three, four, five. And then off. That, I think, is pretty nice on this machine that you get those five backlight levels, unlike a ThinkPad where you only get two, at least on their backlit keyboards. So that's pretty nice. I like that there's a function key to turn that, the screen off. Look at that. That's pretty cool. I like that. Um, yeah, it, it's a very... I think this one turns the trackpad on and off. Yeah, it does. Yep, that's what that does. So, overall, I like the keyboard a lot, mostly because it uses the function keys as the main keys and uses the secondary functions the way they're supposed to be for volume, LCD screen, brightness, airplane mode, the camera, the sleep button, keyboard backlight, yada yada yada. I think that's the way it, it, it should be. And Yeah, so all in all, I got Debian working on this machine. It works fantastic. Uh, I did have to add the Ubuntu Play Deb repo to get a bunch of my games on here, which is a little bit questionable because it can break packages sometimes, but most of the games I installed don't seem to break. But as long as the games that, that you installed don't use a bunch of Ubuntu resources, they will work on Debian through the Play Deb repo. I just happen to use, for my repository, the, um, the LTS version of Ubuntu that, that is cl as close to the release of Debian as I can, and that seems to solve my issues. Works fine, so that's cool. Anyway, yeah, there you go. That So I managed to get Debian installed on here to my liking, and it runs fantastically. I haven't had any problems since I've had Debian on here. No instability issues, all that was OpenSUSE related. Most of the issues I've had with this machine have been software related, which is a happy problem to have. The hardware itself is fantastic. So, on to the conclusion we shall go. So, as a first foray into the world of Clevo and System76, what are my impressions? My impressions are very good, actually. I was expecting this laptop to feel quite a bit cheaper than it does. It's very well built. It's built like a gaming laptop without it being a gaming laptop, and that is fantastic. Something Clevo seems to be very good at. Although that does sound a little bit cheap, I have to admit. But it's built pretty darn well. It's very rugged. The aluminum feels great, both on the back of the screen there and on the front of the machine here. The trackpad is excellent. I love this trackpad. Usually for trackpads, the best, the best are Apple. But this is a close second. Uh, I can work very quickly with this trackpad. It supports two-finger scrolling in a way that's very comfortable and doesn't get in my way, unlike a lot of other computers where it barely works. It, it's all, it feels more like the hardware the uh, two-finger scrolling is in hardware rather than software and I think I believe it is in this machine and that's very very good um, the keyboard is very nice feels very solid obviously it's not as good as a ThinkPad keyboard because it's not a ThinkPad but it is excellent I like having the number pad that makes life a lot easier when you have to enter when you're using the calculator or entering stuff for banking or spreadsheets or basically when you need to do a bunch of data entry the number pad is very nice to have the backlight on this keyboard is excellent. It has five levels, unlike ThinkPads, which normally have two levels, which is, you know, kind of bright and very bright, is what, I, is what I describe that as. Whereas this one, you get five different levels, and that's great. You can have it at the lowest level when it's completely dark, and it's great. The screen is excellent. A uh, very clear screen. I did need to turn the fonts up to 12. Despite that, a 1080p screen on a 14-inch laptop like this is the perfect resolution. I'm glad they didn't choose a high DPI display for this because it's just entirely unnecessary for a machine uh, like this. Uh, personally, I, I mean, high DPI is better if you're going to do something like video editing, which a machine like this would be capable of. But for my needs, a 1080p screen is actually perfect for this size because everything's legible, you can read it, you don't need any scaling. So other than that, the machine feels very good. The webcam seems to be all right. I mean, it, laptop webcam. What you'd expect out of a laptop webcam is what you get. A very pleasant surprise is the microphone on this machine is excellent. And I'll insert a clip right here of me talking, of me um, using a program to record the uh, 
webcam and microphone just so you can get an idea. Okay, this is a test of the webcam in the 2017 model of the System76 Gazelle, the Gaze 12 model number version. As you can see, the microphone is pretty good on this. You know, hearing me talk, it sounds great. I really like the microphone on this thing. Uh, the webcam, on the other hand, at least at 1080p, it's pretty horrible. I mean, it to me, when you play this back, it looks interpolated. It looks really, really bad. And the frame rate here, as you can see, just look at my hands. Five frames per second is what you get at 1080p. That is terrible. 1080p on, on this webcam is more suitable for pictures than it is for video. Because for video, this is like... feels like I'm using a camera from 2007, ten years ago. It's bad. Uh, the resolution's better, but the motion is really bad. It almost looks like I have bad lighting, but I don't. I have lights on over there. So it, it it's just bad altogether, too. I, mm. So let me show you a different resolution. I wonder if I can change this on the fly here in OBS. So let's change this to 720p, which is about 10 frames per second. Ah, it froze it. It froze it. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Okay, and this is the test at 720p. As you can see, the motion is much better. It's not perfect but at 10 frames per second it's at least watchable this is good enough for video conferencing if you need to talk to someone and see a facial expression it's fast enough to pick that up so 720p seems like the sweet spot i think for the resolution of this webcam it, it seems to work alright um, at this resolution There's, the motion's not bad and it seems clear enough that you know it'd be good enough for video conferencing or even making a video for youtube or something like that it's not ideal. I've seen better frame rates on cameras of this resolution, but this is alright. It's decent. It's okay. Webcams still suck. It's just a reality. So now I'm going to show you 640x480. Okay, this is 640x480. As you can see, the motion is fantastic. This is at 30 frames per second. So you get perfect frame rate on this. This is exactly what you would want. I wish the 720p was um, the setting was at 30 frames per second, but the webcam doesn't seem to be capable of that, at least in OBS anyway. So 640 by 480 gives you the best frame rate. It's kind of the best compromise between frame rate and resolution. Um, I still think 720p is more ideal if you can set it to that. Uh, just it, it gets it's the best comprom That's actually the best compromise between resolution and frame rate. This gives you the best frame rate. Uh, it's almost like it's native 640x480 or something. I, I don't know, but webcams still kind of suck in general. This is what you get. 720p is the resolution I would probably use with this one. This has been a test of the webcam and the microphone of the Gazelle. Microphone? Good. Webcam? Nah, it's a webcam. It sucks, like most webcams do. There you go. As you can see, the microphone on this is pleasantly is a pleasant surprise. It's very, very good. Although I, when I installed OpenSUSE, the gain was all the way up, so I had to turn it way down. I did notice on the default Ubuntu installation there was a fix for that in the System76 repository that fixed the mic gain. I suspect all that probably does is turn the gain down. But I was able to do that manually just in the Pulse Audio sound settings, and it was fine just in your typical sound settings in the uh, in your desktop environment of choice now what else do I think of it obviously I think the build quality is very good it's built like a game it's built like a rugged gaming laptop without being a gaming laptop and that's the biggest advantage to a machine like this whether you get it from system 76 or Clevo or um, Sega or anybody like that the I.O. is my favorite part of the machine the honest to goodness Ethernet and the VGA are actually really useful uh, yes, VGA is still useful if you need to plug this into a projector. I like the fact that it has this old-school hardware layout. You know, your typical ports. The separated mi uh, headphone and microphone I very much appreciate because I have headsets that use that. And the fact that you have such an old-school type of layout with USB-C 3.1 is fantastic, plus an SD card slot and everything like that. The thing that Clevo, the thing that Clevo and System76 machines really have going for them is the fantastic I/O that they have. This one is definitely no exception to that. 
the ventilation is good. The fan runs, uh, but it doesn't get too loud. I mean, you obviously you're going to hear it, but it doesn't emit a whine or anything like that. It just sounds like your typical white noise, just... Um, compare that to the fan of a ThinkPad T430 that loves to whine, and it's, it's a night and day difference. So would I recommend getting the System76 Gazelle, model number Gaze 12? As you can see there, Gaze 12. Uh, I would if this is the laptop you're looking for. If you're looking for a 15-inch laptop that does not have a discrete graphics chip but does have the option for quad-core CPUs, this is definitely the one to get. This this I got as a workhorse Linux laptop that I'll be uh, taking around and using, and it's it's been absolutely fantastic so far. The only the only real issues I've had have been software related and not hardware related, which is a happy problem to have when you buy a laptop like this. The hardware itself is excellent. I love I, I forgot to mention the fact that you can remove the battery still on a laptop like this. It's fantastic. This is a Cabby Lake machine where you can remove the battery and have extra ones. That's fantastic. I did end up buying an extra battery for it too when I bought the machine. So that that's fantastic. It's a combination of new and old and that's what makes the this laptop in particular so good. So there you have it. That is the System76 Gazelle, the 2017 model. I hope this video was informative enough and gave quite a bit of the detail that I think is definitely needed for some of these machines that isn't on YouTube at the moment and really should be. So, because these these are some pretty fantastic machines, just based on my first impression of this first machine I got my hands on. So, other than that, I hope you all enjoyed the video, and have a good one, everybody. Ciao. Oh, and quickly, for those of you wondering what the Clevo model of this laptop is, I will post it in the description. So, if, if you're curious about that, that's where it will be.